Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and my colleague, Prime Minister Gonzalez, for bringing us to this point. But I must ask the question, what are we really doing? The climate crisis is upon us in ways that we all accept. But yet, we are not seeming to act with the laser focus that is required if we are going to be equal to the moment and equal to the time. The reality is that we need to be able to understand that the task of saving both people and planet are equal and that we are not a one issue civilization. We have come to this point without adequately preparing ourselves to bring along our people and without adequately acting to save the planet, in spite of having access to the knowledge for the last century, we are rushing now to be able to act. The difficulty is, is that our actions require changes in access to money, changes in access to rules, changes in access to in our philosophy. An imperialistic framework for the structure of international organizations is not going to bring about the solutions in a moral and strategic way necessary to save the planet. And we're seeing the examples of that expressed throughout all that we do. Similarly, we are not in a position to secure the global public goods that are necessary. The pandemic floored almost every one of our nations. And in spite of the fact that we have that recent example, we're not mobilizing the capital necessary to avoid the next pandemic or indeed to fight the slow motion silent pandemic of antimicrobial resistance. The reform of our international financial institutions is critical if our countries are able to summon not just the will, but the capacity to be able to prepare themselves to become more resilient. But yet we use old metrics such as debt per capita that are designed to be able to bring people back into poverty. We need a framework that literally acknowledges that those countries on debt row need the ability to breathe and need to have their debt forgiven and or restructured. We also need a framework that recognizes that poor people do not only live in low income countries, they live in middle income countries. And unless we want to see the pauperization of middle income countries again, then we need to acknowledge the vulnerability that has been wrought on middle income countries by reason of the climate crisis and by reason of the pandemic and indeed the inflationary pressures occasioned by the Russian-Ukraine war. On this matter of fairness, the same eyes that caused us to say that it was not appropriate for a new president to be announced in Venezuela three years ago are the same eyes that allow us to say that Russia is wrong with its imperialistic ambition into Ukraine. We cannot see one side and not apply it fairly and equally to the other. Similarly, there are other conflicts in the world that require absolute attention. And the reality is that unless we reform the institutions that are responsible for funding, one, the climate crisis, two, preparation for the pandemic, three, the consequences of war and fragility, and may I add four, food and water insecurity, and five, digital divide, we are not going to be able to stabilize the global community and to be able to stabilize the planet and people. I ask us therefore today, are we equal to the moment? Something is fundamentally wrong with the global decision-making processes that do not allow us to make decisions and act with dispatch. And our people, therefore, are losing the trust in the established institutions, particularly given the fake news that is being promoted by the artificial intelligence and by the proponents of people who don't want to see a fair deal. A philosophy that sees might still, a philosophy that sees power still, a philosophy that sees capital only without seeing people and migrants will continue to lead to this kind of dis distrust that our people are feeling. I hope that this grouping, EU and CELAC, can rise to the occasion. I say one last thing. If we leave the issues of the past unresolved, we will not be able to come together in unity to solve the problems of the future. And language 
and geopolitics ought not to dis disrupt our ability to reach an agreement. The reality is that if we unfair and we have an unfair coexistence that is rooted in history, we need to address it and we need to move forward on it. I hope that we will summon the courage individually and collectively to act not just in this forum, but in the succeeding fora, because if ever there was a time that the survival of the planet and the people needed our leadership and our intervention, it is now. Thank you.